All right, Microsoft, you can spy on us now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so does anyone remember uh, where we actually ended? <laughs> no, I, I do. Okay. Oh, of course. You're the of secretary. Course. That's why you're secretary. <laughs> That's why you're secretary. <laughs> yes, I have my notes. Referring back to my notes, oh. we, we ended with discussing Leia, her her scenes and her death, and right. we had not yet talked about the return of Lando or the return of Luke. Yup, yup. You're singing yup now. Yup, yup. Yup now. Yup. At the Cantina Club. All right, we're we're back. We're uh, going to wrap up our review of uh, the rise of Skywalker. Um, we had gotten to the point last time where we were talking about the return of original trilogy characters, and we had discussed the return of Han Solo to help bring about the redemption arc of his son uh, Ben Solo. Uh, we discussed Princess Leia, and we were pretty well. It seemed like we had a consensus that we were pretty well satisfied that they did what they could with the footage that they had of Carrie Fisher to give her a, a noble send-off. Um, we haven't yet had a chance to talk about Lando or Luke Skywalker's appearance in this film. So why don't we start with Lando since he appears first. Um, what did you guys make of Billy D. Williams' return? Greedo? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought I talked fine. already too much in this episode. Oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> um, I, I loved it. I could just call me easy to please in these mm-hmm. kind of regards. I mean, if you... <clears throat> I, I I am sorry that he was robbed of his true significance yeah. uh, by just being shoehorned in in the last episode and kind of almost being an afterthought, like, hey, I've been hanging on this planet for all these years where Luke <laughs> left me, or whatever that was supposed to be. <laughs> I, w- I would have liked it if he'd had an actual story, you know, uh, that was more than just him. Hey, Lando, go get all your old pals, you know, that owe you money from gambling and get them to show up at the end. Uh, I would have liked to have seen that. If Chewie and Lando wa- went to rally people, I wanted to see them him go meet Wedge, you know, and pull Wedge out of retirement and pull yes, these other characters Wedge. out of retirement. Yeah, <laughs> well, just, we just need to show... They could have shown a different side. The way they went with Luke in The Last Jedi, they could have shown... Uh, how other people feel about that and how other people have aged and how they look at conflict and whether, you know, because it seems like most of the old characters had stepped away completely. That's the theme they've gone with all of them except Leia. And so I would have liked to have seen a different side of that. Maybe Wedge was still fighting somewhere or maybe he was training people or maybe um, just give us a different, you know, why the why people didn't answer. Give us an explanation why people didn't answer in The yeah. Last Jedi. Um but I would have liked Lando. If you're going to have a casino, have him in there. Uh, I still think, you know, maybe it's shallow, but I think there's some connection to Finn there, which they ended up writing into the storyline for the new Stormtrooper character. And I, I just, it's a shame the stuff we didn't get to see, because I understand he's uh, he's limited by age and everything, but um, with the budget you have and the... Uh, the audience knows that stuff, and you can suspend your disbelief and work around it. I, I didn't want any of these old characters to be Superman or anything, but I feel kind of like they just gave up on a lot of them and then just threw them in for the reaction. But it was awesome to see him, and uh, and I did love it. I just wanted more, I guess. And uh, I would love to have seen him have some kind of more significant role than kind of the same one he played in Return of the Jedi. It was just the same, exact same yeah. again, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Every time I just caught myself, every time he was on screen, I just caught myself smiling, <laughs> you know, ear to ear. Yeah. Just like, oh, there's Lando, you know, he's back. It was so great. Um, Can yeah, I ask I you something it. real quick? Did, did sure. your audience react that you saw it the first time with when he, I think okay. I was, I think you were with me the first time though, right? Or was it the second? No, uh, it was the second. second. No, it was, my, okay. it was my first. Oh, okay. So when you saw it with an audience, did, did they have a reaction when he showed up? Because when I, we saw it opening night and there was an audible... Mm-hmm. Lift in the in the audience yeah. and sound and stuff when he showed up. Everybody yeah, was so happy. I don't, all I don't recall too much of one just because of the fact that obviously since I was sick, I, it took me a week to even get around yeah. to seeing the film. You know, so it already <laughs> been out like eight days when I saw it. So I don't really That's recall true. any not- noticeable, uh, you know, response to it or audible response. Uh, but I, I enjoyed it. I, I do agree that I felt he was a little bit underutilized, of course. But and and of course we've also got a. I think I already mentioned this on part one that it was weird that suddenly he just shows up 
out of nowhere. You know, it's like at you know, I mean, they they had him on the the Burning Man planet. Obviously, we saw that scene where they they show that he's still around, and then later, you know, he, he basically we 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 think we're never going to see him again because he's like, oh, my flying days are over. And then fast forward twenty minutes in the film, and he's just at the Rebel base, <laughs> just hanging <laughs> out, no explanations. Like, oh, you change your mind or what? You know what's going on? <laughs> and he's just there. But I mean, I like that obviously because and. and Looking at the you know, the the production stills and stuff before the before the film was released, we knew he was going to be there because there's shots of him in the rebel hangar and you know talking to Poe and Finn and people like that. So we knew he was going to still be around, but it was still like the, no explanation whatsoever. He just showed up. Um, but now, he did I, I, he did have one line where he said, "Leia sent me a message." Yeah, but that was earlier. It wasn't like yeah, he said, "Come was, to the so, rebel base." He just right, sent him a message. It's just you know? kind of offhanded, sort of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, not not a big not a big issue. But uh, he did not. So bottom line is, I loved him being there. Uh, I just thought the, I don't know. I thought the scene at the end was a little weird <laughs> with the the stormtrooper because yeah. they didn't explain what that was about. You know, no, it left everybody it feeling like, huh? Ways, and it could actually go creepy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you really think about it, <laughs> so where are you from? <laughs> yeah. well, let's find out. <laughs> hey, kid, like, uh... sit, on, sit on Uncle Lando's lap here. And let me tell you a story about exploding Death Stars <laughs> and crushing blue. <laughs> Hello, what have we here? What have we here? Exactly. Truly, you belong in. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just so call I, it. Um, and, and obviously, I have to get my my shout in. Did you guys see the crushing blow that Wedge landed? <laughs> the crushing blow in this. In this no, uh, in I this deny movie. that any such thing ever happened. No, it was amazing. Well, you need to watch. I'm it a again. crushing blow denier. Oh, no. I mean, you can deny all you want, but it doesn't change the fact that it happened. Uh, but yeah, I would love to have seen. Here's my only thing about the. I get it. You know, they're not going to put a whole scene of wedge in there, but at least have him in the celebration at the end. Yeah. yeah. He looked everywhere. Like, where is the? Yeah. Oh, they should have. They should have later shown an epilogue where they're like, "Where's Wedge?" And they go on the Falcon, and he's dead in the chair. <laughs> he just takes a fire, and they forgot about him. They turn the chair around. It's like, Ta-da! he's dead. <laughs> He just his heart yeah. couldn't take it. He yeah, got was... one, one second of wedge. Uh, <laughs> I I have to agree with you guys on most of what you said. Um, and I'll I'll address wedge first, I guess. Um, I was thrilled to see him for the one and a half seconds second. <laughs> yeah. he appeared on film. But uh, Greedo has a really good point. It would have made Lando's story also more interesting if you could have followed Lando back to um. Uh, on his mission to gather people to help them to intervene because Wedge was part of that. And you could have the two of them come together and give Wedge a little bit more to do. And um, so it would have helped both those characters, I think, to do something like that. And we needed that from The Last Jedi because The Last Jedi just left it hanging as to why did the entire galaxy abandon them? Right. That was just so mm-hmm. bizarre, and there was no real explanation of why no one answered and no one came. Yeah, to the princess. galaxy has one mind. Everybody either has hope or they don't yeah. all at once. It, right, it, right. it doesn't make sense to what we know about the Star Wars galaxy at all. Yeah, that was bizarre. So there could have been a way to explain that, and it could have been a cool way to see Lando use both his charm and to enforce his moral compass beneath that charm you know by allowing him to use that to persuade people to come to their aid so that would have been a really good way to expand his character but another point i want to make about lindo is the the first appearance you mentioned on uh the desert planet Mm -hmm. um that story that he told them when they're on their hunt, their quest for the Wayfinder or whatever it was they were looking yeah, for. The I'm still like, yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> the Wayfinder. What? When he told them that, yeah, yeah, I, I w- was hanging out with Luke here, whatever, how many, 25 years ago. And we were, were they looking for the way to Palpatine or they were looking for yeah. clues of Palpatine's continued existence mm-hmm. or something? Yeah, how does that fit with what You're everything right. we know? It really doesn't. Oh. But I, open I, crawl says it just recently happened. Yeah. I know, I, and I don't care if it fits or not. That's the story I wanted to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. I, I like but see, that. that's one they could Brando do with CGI. 
<laughs> oh, well, well, they could, get, they could get Donald Glover. They already got a young Lando. You yeah. know, they could get Donald Glover. They could, and and even if they don't have it in the film, I want that in like a TV show or something. I mean, yeah. here's a can, canonical now canonical story that Lando and Luke hung out together after yeah. Return of the Jedi and went on a quest together. Mm-hmm. I got a mission see together. That. I gotta see that. So that me made too. Me I thought the same thing. I was like, "That's the movie I wanted to see." Yeah. What happened? Yeah. So I I wish that there was some way that they could pick up on that. Maybe in future television shows or something. I doubt it though. But yeah. um, that that was very intriguing to me. And then the other point I want to make about Lindo is uh, what you guys both mentioned about him returning to the rebel base. Is that got me excited, even though it wasn't fully explained just to mm-hmm. see the shot of him sitting beneath the falcon surrounded right. by all the rebels uh, who were listening to yeah, him and talking cool. it very was cool. just it was like lando holding court at the falcon you mm-hmm. know lando back yeah. at the falcon. Uh, that was just awesome seeing <sighs> it in the trailers that was one of the only shots in the trailers because i did not like the trailers that that i found appealing um because it felt like they're they're paying attention to him. They know his value, and I really want to see him have that kind of role. And I I wanted it to be a bigger role, just like you guys did. But I was I was glad that we got at least some of of Lando in this film. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I think we all agree on that. And um, yeah, either, either, there's obvious age limitations, and you're writing a big budget, basically what comes down to an action movie. So you have to be creative and and figure out ways to use characters that aren't action characters anymore. Uh, Star Wars really lends itself to that, uh, I think, because uh, you have all the different ship shots where people are sitting down, you know, which is how they ended up using Lando in this. But it's weird to say. I just thought of something very odd. But uh, when we were kids, I used to make fun of Battlestar Galactica all the time because it was a blatant ripoff of Star Wars, right? Mm-hmm. And now I would just had this thought occur in my mind. It's like, why didn't they use Lando more like uh, an Adama yeah. from Battlestar yeah, Galactica right. from the new one? And then it made me realize, oh, crap, Battlestar Galactica is now better than Star Wars. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what happened? You know what I mean? What happened that this is now occurring in my head? This is sacrilege. <laughs> So that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> but I mean, no. if you gave Billy D. Williams like moral conflicts to deal with, where he didn't have to go out and throw fists or whatever, yeah. he could use his mind and his cleverness and his. You could figure out more about Lando's morality because he's one of the gray characters from the original trilogy yeah. uh, who right. had to actually weigh these decisions in his head and think about all the consequences and not just. You know, Leia was willing to sacrifice her whole home planet because she's that devoted. Lando wasn't. You know, he wasn't that person. So um, it would have been really cool to see more, even a series or something, where he's put in a position to make those kind of decisions like a Picard or a or a Adama or something like that. But, well, you know, we can't have everything. So. <laughs> but uh, he really brought it, I thought. Uh, did a great job. Uh, it wasn't his fault so that last scene. It was it was more of a case of the final scene was tone deaf because of the rush of the whole film. You couldn't right. believe it was over. It's like, is this really over? Are they really? You almost expected the shadow to fall over everyone. There's another Death Star or something because it was just too quick and too, <laughs> right. too easy. You know, too easy yeah, to win. Too much of a, like, a all, bow wrapped around First this, Order and yeah. the Emperor and everybody's defeated in one hour or whatever. <laughs> so, anyway, so yeah, but awesome. Billy D. Williams and since we talked about awesome scene, Dennis Lawson and... Uh, Right. He freaking played it uh, totally stone faced when we saw him at Pensac- or at uh, Knoxville uh, yeah. convention. Because I flat out asked him, I said, "Are you going to be in the next one?" <laughs> Just because we were talking and stuff, and he was like, "Um, you know." <laughs> <laughs> and he did mention how he had wanted to be in the new movies. That yeah. was all he would say. He had wanted. I think that's because they made defenses <laughs> with him, and he's trying to he's trying to let the message, you know, like, "Hey, I was never against this in the first place." It's mm-hmm. You know that I've been given a bad rap or whatever. So yeah, right. Yeah. Well, we were what... surprised how great he was and how happy he was. You know, and how much he loved, Star- how much he projected liking and loving Star Wars when we met him from all the stories we've heard. You know, it was definitely... yeah, it was clear that he did great really want to be a part of it. So yeah. Um. Well, do we want to move on then to Luke? Yes. Luke's, sure. Luke's yeah. return. And uh, how about Carillion? You feel this one? Oh, about the Death Star. This one. Okay. Yeah, um, I, 
I was kind of mixed on Luke in this film. Um, and I'm not sure why. It's just kind of a feeling. I don't know. With the, I thought the the scene where uh, Ray was on Octo or whatever you call it, um, and and burning the Tie Fighter and all that, and how he comes walking out of the flame. I just thought it. Was, I don't know. It just seemed too melodramatic in a way. Maybe that's the right word. Um, and the way he catches the saber, you know, yeah. all dramatically and walks out with it, holding it up, you know, in, in a way I kind of took that as almost like a, 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 a middle finger to uh, Ryan Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> He's like holding it triumphantly. You know? <laughs> so the, the spirit of Leia should have appeared clinging to his leg and he could have held it up in the air and ignited it. <laughs> we would have had the poster. <laughs> Why not? They almost went that far. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I like the discussion he had with her. I, I like the dialogue they had. Uh, I didn't have any problem with that. I just, I just thought the representation was just, just looked a little weird to me. I don't know. I just thought it, to me it was just off, and I can't really put a, a word to it or a way to describe it. Um, <clears throat> I loved. I know we've talked about this scene already, but the, um, the, the, the training scene uh, post Return of the Jedi from you know back in the day with Leia and and. And him, I, I love that scene for obvious reasons. Yeah. I thought that was just really cool. I liked how they inc- included that. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Overall, again, you know, it, this all just boils down to the complete and total underutilization of Mark Hamill in the entire sequel trilogy. So, mm-hmm. you know, I like getting a little bits and pieces here and there, but unfortunately that's all we get. And um, and then when we do get it, it's generally wasted is what I ultimately kind of got out of it. I, <laughs> right. feel, it, I just feel like Luke was completely wasted in the entire new trilogy. So, yeah. Whoa, yeah. Which, oh my God, I can't believe we're sitting here saying that, but I think we all agree. Oh, that's so sad. Hey, it's so <laughs> tragic. So it's so tragic that we're here at the end, and this is what we have to say. This is what we're saying, and, yes, yeah. And, this, and it's the Skywalker saga. This is the conclusion yeah. of the Skywalker saga, and to have him underutilized. I, I mean, I know we're going to new characters and, and things, but... And, I I really didn't want the old characters to totally dominate the new films. No. But they could have used him much more appropriate ways to reinforce the new characters and to further develop his own character than they did. It was a waste. So. But um, I'll respond to what you say about the moment whenever he caught the saber and he's coming out of the burning time. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm kind of with you. That kind of looked corny to me. Right. It was like it was it was over the over the top attempt to deal with people being so upset about him tossing the saber in in the last Jedi, but at the same time, I don't think it's. And there's been a lot of uh, stuff online about how it's a like you said a slap in the face to Ryan Johnson. Where I I don't necessarily think it could be read that way. He's he was mistaken in the last Jedi. Um, he by the end of the film, you know, he came to a different way of thinking, and so it seems to me natural that he would be saying, "No, tossing your saber away isn't the way to go. You need to do something," you know, because that's yeah. what he himself learned by the end of that film. So, right, right. Uh, I think they were they were having their cake and eating it too. They were doing something to try to visually make up for that scene that offended so many in the last film, and they were trying to do it in a way that still reinforce the supposed moral growth of Luke in the last film. Because <laughs> he was so <laughs> immoral. Yes. Um, <laughs> Thank but, God Luke Skywalker got redemption, right? I mean, yeah. he's such a dirty bastard. Always. Exactly. Always. He always needed redemption. He right? was I mean, so despicable. Yeah, I just couldn't wait 35, 40 years to see his redemption. <laughs> 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 I was sitting there just like, God, ah, Luke Skywalker, what a bum. Yeah, I hope, what a I hope he gets redemption someday. I hope he gets shot. <laughs> Oh, but I don't know. Even know if he deserves it, really. Honestly, I mean. <laughs> but I do. Want to say, I do want to say one more thing about those scenes with Ray. I agree with Carilling in that the conversation with Ray was good. Um, it was more on the points of the kind of things we should have got from Luke in the Last Jedi between Ray and Luke in the Last Jedi. Um, I was bothered though again by the kind of corniness of him sitting down on the log next to her, an exact replica of Ben Kenobi sitting down next to Luke yeah. in Return of the Jedi. Yeah, I expected and, him to say something about a different point of view. You yeah, know, or yeah, certain point yeah. of view. <laughs> yeah, and then when he he lifted the X wing again, it felt like it was too over the top. I don't I don't know how to explain it. It's just like you, Carilli, and I have a feeling it didn't work quite. Right for me. Do you guys want me to clear this up for you? 
Yeah. Yes. Go okay. To me, to me, uh, I am glad those scenes were in there. First off, um, <clears throat> but they don't fit in the movie. Okay. They're an extra added on, and they and it's like they took a survey of Luke Skywalker fans and they checked every single box, <laughs> including right. <laughs> including having him have the big smile at the end, which yeah. was which was a big deal to people who were so depressed at seeing Luke uh, incapable of even smiling one time through an entire movie in the Last Jedi. He may have smirked once, mm -hmm. um, and he gave the wink to three PO, but he was totally grim character and that smile was there to restore his optimism and make him boyish again and and uh but anyway i liked it i loved him raising the the uh, x-wing out of the out of the water i mean i don't understand why he didn't do it before if it was possible but uh <laughs> but but the whole scene was an add-on to me yeah I, I mean i i don't ever i don't even know that it was originally in there it was it probably they had a different role for luke and then when they went and looked at it and and then when Disney or whoever ordered them to make a film that everyone would like, they said, "Well, okay, let's check some boxes then." And, and what does <laughs> what does Mark want to say? You know, what does Mark want to say with Luke? And Mark probably just wanted to restore some of Luke's optimism, yeah, and get his check. You know, <laughs> and so that's yeah. what happened. But but uh, it doesn't make sense that uh, they they did not properly build up to Ray withdrawing from the world. Um, they did not properly build up to any kind of huge decision there that would have been that should have been the turning point to the to launch us into the end of the film. And it was weak because the film is so rushed. Yeah. Yeah, characters flip flop back and forth. We don't know. I still don't really know why Ray's doing what she's doing. And, right. and if it was me and I heard about my parents and my parents assassination and they left me, I'd be trying to find out what was up with that. Mm -hmm. That's not enough for me to just hear, oh, well, they were the the. You know, I want to know about them. You know, she suddenly yeah. just at the end she says, "No, my parents knew about love or whatever." How do you even know that? You don't. Yeah, even, how do you know? That? None of what they did made any sense. You know, they <laughs> sold you into slavery for love. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> you know, and, and your mom was so stupid. She's telling the assassin, "Oh no, no, she's not on Jakku. Don't look on Jakku. Yeah, whatever you do, don't look on Jakku." As she's being stabbed, you know. <laughs> it, it, none of that many it's it's the problem with the whole film is the whole thing is rushed and but i love luke so much i love mark hamill so much um and i wanted uh ray and luke to have some kind of connection so uh my my another issue i have with it is that someone with a little bit of creativity and able to weave some actual themes in instead of rushing to the conclusion could have done something with that lightsaber catch where he finally imparts her a lesson that, you know what, you aren't about this lightsaber. This lightsaber is not me. It's not you. It's not Anakin. It's a lightsaber. It has a legacy. It, you know, sure, it called to you because it's Jedi Destiny and all that, but you are not defined by this object. Yeah. And actually, the only thing this object's going to do at the end is block some lightning from Palpatine. That's it. That's all it did. That's all the, that's all the uh, lightsabers <laughs> did. But he ends up giving her another one. They'd assume even more importance. You know, as a as a symbol or, or, or as an actual object, and then she buries him in the sand and all that. I I just feel like the lightsaber was kind of like the dice. It's a in Solo, it's a symbol that was given too much significance in the end, when the true significance should have been focused on the characters themselves. And it would have been an awesome opportunity for him to say, "You already had everything. You know, you don't you don't yeah. need this saber to, to complete you. You don't need to throw it away. You don't need to keep it. You you decide what you want to do." Um, because this, you know, I know Obi-Wan told Anakin, you know, this weapon is your life. But I think he meant that more in the, when you're out being a Jedi on active right. missions. And you, That's this is the one, this yeah. one possession you can't lose. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it would have been a good time for him to actually be a mentor to her and give her something to calm her soul. Other than just saying, <laughs> mm -hmm. you have to go face Palpatine. <laughs> That's it, you know, but... He did say something about um, you're not just the blood or something like that. He did have a couple of good things to say there. Um, you know, don't you're a Palpatine, but it's, it's Leia knew it wasn't just about your blood. Um, there was good stuff there that if they had uh, thematically made it more impactful and built up to it better and everything like that, and made it more consistent. It was just too rushed, um, and it felt less like an important reveal and less like. Luke being a mentor and more like an apology tour, you know, for the people who hated The Last Jedi. And I don't even know if their heart was in it. Like I said, it felt like an addition to me. And that's why you guys feel awkward about it, because I it was awkward. Right. 
Yeah, I think you mm -hmm. pegged it. it. It feels like an add-on at the last minute that and yeah. they're pushing too hard and trying too hard with it. And they and it's almost like Mark said, I'll give you a week. That's all I got yeah. to give you guys. Yeah. And so they said, because they called him for, I think it was a reshoot. I really do. And and uh, and so they said, well, we got to make Luke look powerful. So we got to, yeah. we'll have him walk out of the flaming, out of the flames. We yeah. got to give everybody, you got to have him smile. Excellent. We got to have him pass on mm -hmm. something from Yoda. And, but the thing that felt true to me was, was the scene where he raised the X-Wing because we finally got to see Luke doing something that, that completed an actual part of the character that yeah. actually existed and that we know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's a shame that it took death or whatever <laughs> it was. Uh, you know, I would have been happier if he had walked out of the flames and just become a person again. I've been waiting for that since 19, uh, whatever, 77, probably. I always thought Obi-Wan was going to come back, you know, in physical right. form. And physical form, so, not um, as a ghost. Yeah. But they already jacked with the force enough in this movie. So. But, but Mark, Mark did a fine job. Uh, and and uh, I will I'll close my section or my little thoughts on Luke Skywalker with this. It's a shame that Nightfall got the spirit of Luke Skywalker almost better than uh, than Star Wars did with the one line where he said, uh, "When you've lost everything, hang on to your faith," or whatever or whatever he said to was it Landry is the character's name. Yeah, yeah. That one line, that one scene made up for any faults of his appearance on that show for me. Um, and his delivery was so perfect. And, oh, my God, if they had just given Luke anything like that yeah. with any kind of emotion and heft behind it, uh, we would be quoting it. It would be on T-shirts. You know, um, instead, we're left with an apology tour. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the apology. people that loved his arc in The Last Jedi, kudos to you. I'm glad you do. I, I, I'm, I hate that a whole movie is almost meaningless to me and especially one that stars one of my favorite characters and favorite actors right. i wish i could find the meaning in it uh um maybe someday i will more and i can watch it and sort of halfway enjoy it now and see i admire what luke did at the end you know being a true jedi and not using violence and um i thought his, his mind trick at the end was very clever all that stuff was very clever but it, it's it, it's like a piece is at war with itself. Nothing ever resolves into a satisfactory conclusion for me in that movie. So even the pieces I admire are undermined by other pieces. And that's just the way I'll always feel about it, I'm afraid. But but anyway, there you yeah. go. It's the Skywalker saga, and we had about a minute and a half of Luke, and it's a mixed, unfortunately, it's a mixed bag, even though they tried really hard yeah. uh, shallowly to check all the boxes for us. We needed depth at that point, you know, yeah. and... Um, Again, it felt a little like a fan fiction or something. Well, what what do you think then about the final scene? Because both Luke and Leia appear in the final scene when Ray takes their lightsabers and buries them beneath the twin suns in, on Tatooine, um, and she's she's carrying her own lightsaber then too, right? This made out of her staff, is that correct? Yeah, out of which, her staff, which yeah. we know makes her a Jedi, I guess. Which she's already declared she's all Jedi before that. Yeah. But but th when you see that, uh, you know that she's, Vader, yeah. even declared your skills are complete when you can do that. So uh, yeah. that just verifies that the Jedi legacy is going to move on and stuff. And that she's unique in it because she has a gold blade or whatever it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. Color. I forgot right. she ignited the blade. Which is, I guess color. you could call that, you know, Ray, sunlight, Ray, the, the light yeah. returning or whatever. Yeah. Right. It was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. I, I mean, the final scene, I, I I was obviously wondering. I really was happy they didn't end it with the celebration scene. Yeah. I just thought that was a little anticlimactic and, and, and too much of a throwback to Return of the Jedi. And did just, you care? What's that? Did you care about the celebration scene, really? Not really, no. Yeah, I mean, either, I, I, <laughs> I, I did, it didn't I feel like the there scene, was a lot of I love the scene where the there. three main characters embraced. Uh, and uh, yeah, Dr. that Echo was tearing cool. up. That but was I good, more yeah. felt emotion from that, like they were saying, "Thank God we've made it to the end of this." <laughs> as, 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 it what an experience altogether. I almost felt that it for the actors more than the characters. <laughs> right. But that was a great scene. The rest was just whatever. You know, it was all right. Yeah, and and like I said, I mean, I you know, I I, I did like the fact that they they had the final scene the way they did. I, I'm a sucker for the binary sunset, so I enjoyed the the final oh. credits ending on that kind of a shot. Um, and I mean, while I wasn't, I mean, I had a few problems with that last scene. I, I don't understand some of the things that were going on and why she's at the homestead and burying the sabers in the sand. And, you know, I, I don't know, whatever. Um, but 
you know, I, I did like the fact that she went there and we got to see the homestead one last time. It, to me, it was a kind of a full circle thing. Uh, we kind of end where it began, um, uh, at least for, as far as the original trilogy is concerned. Um, and, you know, t- take it or leave it with the her taking the name Skywalker. I know there's a lot of people complaining about that. I honestly don't have that much of a problem with it. Um, in a way, I kind of wish she had kept the name Palpatine just because <laughs> it, it switches the meaning of Palpatine to good, you know, because yeah. obviously you know, based on, you know, what her character has done, um, you know, so, but I, but I did like the final, the actual final closing shot of her looking at the binary sunset with BB-8 there. I thought I, I really, that, that gave me way more satisfaction than had they just gone to the credits after the, uh, the, the pan back on the celebration. Yeah, yeah that would have been horrible. I, I, I did, my favorite scene from that was when she slid down the, the sand on the piece of metal. Yeah. yeah, I did like that very much as a throwback mm-hmm. to yeah, Exactly-ish. Force Awakens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because I, I feel like that should have been more of Ray's character through the whole trilogy. Um, they tried to make her conflicted when I never felt any conflict from her. And she should have been more about trying to find optimism, joy, happiness. The fact that she finds happiness in such a small gesture yeah, sliding down the yeah. hill shows that she's still you know, has that kind of kid's optimism at heart and everything. And I feel like, you know, not to make her too much of a repetition of Luke, but I just don't feel like all the conflict worked. Mm -hmm. It it only worked for sexual tension or whatever. It didn't work (laughs) as a true moral choice. There's never was anything presented to her that we felt like she wanted or anything like that from the dark side. So um, anyway, uh, but I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. That was like, so I, was... I, want, I want to hear what Gundark thought about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I loved that final scene. That, to me, was the best scene of the entire film. And I felt like it was... Uh, if uh, if the film had been better, <laughs> and the whole sequel <laughs> trilogy had been better... We would have been me, sobbing at that point. Yes, uh, to yeah, me, it yeah, would have been yeah. a very appropriate conclusion to the whole Skywalker saga. I, mm-hmm. I love that she takes both Luke and Leia's lightsabers back, because we're going back to the prequel trilogy, you know, of Luke and Leia being separated as the special babies, and... Um, now she's going back to Luke's home planet with the twin sunset and the twin babies reunited and we get to see the twin force ghosts of Luke and Leia with Leia again in her white, you know, with the callback to um, the early films, the original trilogy films. Um, and I love the moment of her choosing the Skywalker name. I thought that was really appropriate um, okay. because it was, if the the point of the whole series of films is moral choice rather than determination by heritage or legacy. That seemed to me to reinforce that choice that she's choosing a moral legacy rather than a, a force power legacy. You know, she's, yeah. she's choosing the, the people who were her real family and who stood by her and made the right moral choices um, as, as opposed to the person who could have given her all power. Um, so to me, that was a powerful moment where she chooses the Skywalker name. I just, I, and I love the idea of families of choice anyway, you know, too often we, we get obsessed with, um, the notion of, of, uh, very rigid s- structures of families, you know, is the only type of family that you can acknowledge. And I love the idea that people can establish connections with others that are family connections, even when they're not yeah. blood related you know and so that was that to me was a beautiful moment and it was a moment of her self-assertion i thought you know she's determining her own identity and right exactly which identity. has been one of the struggles throughout the entire trilogy is her find, trying to figure out who she is and yeah. she finally ends the the discussion by saying this is who i am yeah and with and with her her own lightsaber mm-hmm. and with the people who helped her get there looking on you know, so I, I just, it was beautiful. And I love that last moment, too, of uh, her and BBA, the twin sunset. I think that all three of us chose the binary sunset from New Hope as our favorite moment in all the Star Wars movies, didn't we? Mm, we I think something about like that, top, yeah. Top moments. I uh, think me and uh, myself and Krillian did, and you chose uh, the father. I am your moment. father, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think Binary Sunset was my second favorite. Yes, so. it was in the top three for you, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, it's, it was wonderful to end on that beautiful note because Binary Sunset kind of, that scene from New Hope kind of defines the over, overall moral story arc of mm-hmm. the entire series. You know, that's a, an iconic moment. So it was cool to return to that at, at the end. Um, Greta, what did you think? 
Uh, I had elements of both what you're saying in there. Um, I don't want to be Captain Negative all the time, although that seems to be my role. But uh, <laughs> um, I, I just, again, all of that felt like a tie-up from one movie, not from nine for me. And that's what shortened my emotional response. That's why, uh, because you have Leia's saber, Leia's legacy, Leia's Jedi training, all introduced in the last film. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. and it's supposed to be paying off not just Luke, but Luke and Leia and their whole family and Ben, so Ben and everybody. And um, I don't. I thought about it. I'm like, why would she be Ray Skywalker? Why would she choose that name? Because Luke treated her like garbage, basically. <laughs> and he, she she learned her true teacher this whole time was was uh, Kylo Ren, because and Maz Kanata taught her the only thing she really needed to know, which is close your eyes, feel the light. It's always there for you, and she never really needed anything besides that. All of the top moments came from her just going, oh, I'm going to close my eyes and channel the Force. She never really had to know anything. She never had to learn anything. She never had to be trained in anything. But according to the books and the extra materials, the person who trained her was Kylo Ren. Because when he opened that mind connection with her, when he was raping her mind, I don't care what anybody says, that's exactly what he did to her in mm -hmm. The Force Awakens. You know, He's not a noble character. Sorry, folks. But anyway, <laughs> when he entered her mind against her will, supposedly she saw his Jedi training and his dark side training and stuff. And that, and, and supposedly that transferred to her somehow and opened her powers. And so she didn't need training is what, is what the force awakens novel kind of implies. And what a lot of trying to explain how they short shifted because uh, shifted because they didn't have enough you know time. But what I'm saying is why not Ray solo? Because Han Solo was the first legend she met. He was the one who took an interest in her and was going to provide her a legacy, not Luke. Uh, right. uh, Han offered her a job. Han offered her a position beside him and Chewbacca. Uh, uh, Leia trained her. Luke turned his back on her. Leia was never a Skywalker. Mm -hmm. I mean, she never took that name. I don't know of any moment ever where she took that name. She was Leia Organa. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then, according to everything we've ever known, she kind of rejected the Skywalker name because of Darth Vader. We don't know if that's true anymore or not. But in any case, the only reason I can think of that justifies it, besides just kind of they have to do something <laughs> and they have to resolve this question, suddenly try to make it a question of Ray's identity being the whole crux of these three movies, even though I really don't think it ever was. It was it was made that way by the Internet and uh, uh, and we didn't get it to see it on screen enough of, you know, but anyway. Uh, the only reason that she'd pick Skywalker is from The Last Jedi, where she said, the galaxy might need a legend. Yeah. Um, and if Rey is thinking at this point, um, and I think this was not true, because it's more of an emotional response when the woman just flat out asked her, what's your last name? Mm -hmm. But I think she's showing that she's learned you are now a legend and you cannot escape it. And the galaxy needs people like that. And so therefore, when she turns on her saber and she says, I'm Rey Skywalker... She's assuming the mantle of legend purposefully because she uh, and all everything that goes with it because she's seen the bad of it uh -huh. and she's seen the good of it and she's seen how it destroys people and how it you have to rise to the occasion or it will crush you. So um, there's a lot of implications there that they probably didn't intend that I take away from it in that I, I, I see more of Ray's character in between the lines than they ever showed us. And that one line to me is saying she's ready uh, to just assume that burden. That's why she's alone. I think at the end mm -hmm. is because friends can't help you with that. Yeah. You know, if you if you're going to be Ray Skywalker, you're alone. You know, I, I, uh, for now, you you have to go fulfill that promise to the galaxy, which is huge. It's a huge, huge burden. So um, anyway, that's what I take away from that, which which I really do like. But it still doesn't quite make sense to me, and I still don't totally believe that's what they intended. So, <laughs> so I don't know. But I'm satisfied with it because I can think about it and come up with my own reasons. And I'm not. I mean, maybe I am an idiot, but I don't need everything spelled out for me, you know. So, <laughs> so I like gray areas that we can talk about and speculate about and have our own beliefs and everything. And that's one of them. So I, I like the, I like the ending and the twin sons. Uh, I did notice there was some imagery in there which was very interesting, which is the sun. One sun seemed to come out from the other. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you guys notice that? The first yeah, shot. There was something unusual about it. I remember. Yeah, the but first I can't shot is what like, it was. The first shot is like one sun kind of behind the other. Like if this mm -hmm. is one sun, and then in the second shot, it's come out further, and I think it comes all the way out or whatever. So I'm not sure what that was about. Um, I th it, there, of course, there's just the cute image of that looked like BB-8. 
<laughs> for a second. It was like BB-8 yeah. looking at a big cosmo, <laughs> a cosmic yeah. version of BB-8. Yeah. But, but I, I wonder if there's some implied imagery there. They just did that uh, to let people speculate about things. I've heard speculation that people think Ray is pregnant and that she has twins, and that's the the sign of the, you know, twin division or whatever. I don't believe any of that, yeah. but but I do wonder why they chose to do it that way. Why show mm-hmm. one dividing into two and all that? And the uh, I think there's a lot of underdeveloped stuff in here with the diet and the force these ideas that almost uh, so, somewhere along the script development they said no 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 forget this whole diet of the force thing and then later on we'll just put it in there <laughs> you know, we, <laughs> go back what did we have diet of the force <laughs> you know, but that was a whole movie that was a whole movie we can't just put it in there well we just don't, we got to just touch on it now <laughs> so, uh, so that that image could have been something from that you know that never got fully developed and it's so frustrating that's the, it's one of the frustrating things about this film is uh it gave you a good time but it it didn't give you fully what it deserved to be your way. You can flesh you, out everything. And yeah. I I, uh, I, can see where your criticism is coming up. It's interesting criticism where you think that the solo name would have been a more appropriate choice for her, for what we got, for the movies that we mm-hmm. got. Yes, right. for what right. we no, that, is a, that is an excellent point. And yeah, it's, I, it's, I, I mean, she was, she was a dyad in the force with Ben Solo. Whatever yeah. that means, I don't know what it means, but it's something, right? <laughs> they yeah. would just... And it, it's, al- it's almost it's like the, she was trained by Leia in this film, but it was so brief. Again, if that had been developed, if her if right. her interaction with Luke and Leia had been fleshed out throughout the two previous films, then the Skywalker name choice might have seemed more appropriate. Or if they me. had shown the ghost of Luke with Leia training her. Yeah. At the beginning, we had a time that we had a sense that over the year he had come back and was helping them both or, or advising her. And they, you know, then we would have had more of a sense. But even that is too rushed. Uh, yeah. We've got, we just got movies fighting with each other. Yeah. <laughs> it's the problem. Exactly what it is. And we're, yeah. and we're left with whatever's <laughs> left standing in the ring at the end. <laughs> well, do we have any final thoughts then? Do we want to wrap it up? Or do you have anything additional to say? Uh, about, I, I wanna, things we I didn't wanna, cover? Yeah, I want to I say let's hit some actual likes. Let's okay. ditch the negativity. I'm going to try not to quantify anything I say. I'm just going to try to make positive statements. So okay. if you have anything, just run through it real quick. Uh, I love the final oh. that final scene. I'll just go back to yeah. that. I love that. Even despite all of uh, your very valid objections, Greedo, I still love that final scene. And I, if we had had a different sequel trilogy, it would have been absolutely perfect for me. <laughs> it almost, no, that's a great almost, point. As it was. That's a fantastic yeah. point that I think Greedo made earlier that, yeah, had this been a, a more effective trilogy, we would have literally been sobbing at that final yeah. scene. We would, this, we would still be is. talking about it right yeah. now and, and, and almost crying. And st- as I mean, it is. Because yeah. that's how much as we love is. Star Wars. like, yeah, that was good. Okay, I'm okay with that. You know, <laughs> okay, yeah, that's but, well, good. I'll even say when I was describing <laughs> it to lead into this segment, I felt like I was going to tear up. So it still had it had that kind of effect on me, even with all the flaws of, okay. of yeah. the sequel trilogy. Yeah. So I, 90, that's 90% my ninety percent of those tears are OT tears, though. <laughs> Let's just face it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely OT tears. <laughs> they need a moisture. They need a moisture evaporator to pull the tears out of me. Yeah. <laughs> after this, after this tr- trilogy of films. <laughs> <laughs> all right so who, somebody take this just give us some likes all right i thought i thought overall i thought it was i thought the film was beautiful i loved so much of the sh- so many of the shots on there i know a lot of it uh, most of the ones i'm talking about are probably cgi shots you know like i i just love the opening scene after the crawl and the pan down to that red planet with the oh, that just that, that shot was just just ah oh, that's it just sucked me in immediately you know mm-hmm. i thought that was yeah. really cool um and then uh, we've got, I love the, the the lightsaber duel on the uh, on on the planet by Endor with the waves and the water. I just thought that was so beautifully shot and very uh, I don't know. I just I got I got a lot of emotion out of that scene. I thought it was really well done. So as far as you know, and obviously the last <laughs> scene with my sunset, it was just it was shot well. They they really you know the, the aesthetics were amazing of it. I thought. Um, other likes, obviously, we've already kind of talked about. I love Lando being back. I loved even if only one and a half seconds, I got to see Wedge. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it completely awesome. and we still and we got a crushing blow. So that's you know that's great. Uh, <laughs> but um, 
yeah, I mean, th- those are some of the, the immediate likes that jump out, um, and it's better than Last Jedi. At <laughs> least <laughs> 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 several steps up from that. I think it's going to be interesting. I think what I think is going to be interesting, though, is you know when we revisit this in say six months or a year, and we talk about where we think Rise of Skywalker falls in our top movies category, because we'll have to redo that at some point. But obviously, now it's too soon. But yeah. at some point, after we've had, say, a year or six months to a year to let mm-hmm. it settle, where is it actually going to end up in the in sort of the pantheon, you know, of the other films that we've already discussed before? Yeah, is it somewhere between Aliens and Alien Three, or is it not? <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. Uh, what are your likes, Greta? What are you, like? are, you, what are, you... are you done? Are you done with your likes, Curlian? Yeah, I mean, yeah, for now, unless I come up with something else. But yeah. Okay. I, I my likes were it was a fun ride. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, it pleasantly surprised me based upon uh, I was nobody was more jaded or cynical going into it. Well, maybe, but not many people <laughs> were more jaded or cynical going into it than me. And like you said, that first shot and Kylo Ren just yeah you know, rage killing all those guys and uh, I loved his moonwalk move that he did. I I love when they use the force. Not in crazy outlandish ways to pull down planets, but just to just mess with people. You know, when you're murdering, sure, murdering people, and you back, you back, slide into them using the force and just take them out, and because you That's know they don't expect yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, 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 lo- I love that. So, uh, but anyway, that first scene pulled me in. It was a good ride from there on out. I was like, when is this movie going to start to really suck? <laughs> you know, and uh, <laughs> and it, it, for me, it, it really uh, it was good. The good ride. The middle part of the movie is awesome. Um, the uh, lo- I love the visuals in the scene on the on Kylo Ren's Star Destroyer hangar deck, mm-hmm. where he's facing off with Ray and all the stormtroopers, yeah. and that the Falcon cool. comes in, and you've got finally we got good versus evil, you know, good mm-hmm. versus evil, and and, uh, and the, the imagery couldn't be more plain, and it um, the stakes that uh, you know, I, I Ian McDermott's awesome. I love seeing him back. I'm gonna I. I love that it gives him a reason to keep going to conventions and appearances <laughs> so we can see him because <laughs> I love it. I, he's a great guy. He's a wonderful person. Can't couldn't be happier for him. Uh, they gave us Luke back uh, mm-hmm. as best they could, and I appreciate that. I'm not gonna grab on that. <laughs> uh, it was an attempt. Uh, um, I do wish he'd had a wooden leg and a and a porg on his shoulder, but uh, <laughs> I would have been happier. <laughs> that would have made me very happy. But. Uh, <laughs> Again, Lando, and uh, uh, I got to give J.J. Abrams credit for, like you said, the the shots that he chose. Um, I do think he's a a visual filmmaker that does have incredible strengths, and uh, I know, and all the people that worked on the movie that had nothing to do with choosing the plot and everything did incredible work because the movie looked fantastic. Some of the lightsaber fighting was emotional, uh, effective. It was shot well. It was edited well. Uh, e- e- the plot points in there are, can be confusing and rushed, but the actual fights didn't seem rushed. They seemed like they took their time with them and made them right. pay off pretty darn well. Yeah. Uh, I liked the confrontation from the planet to the Star Destroyer, um, you know, like Captain's Deck or whatever it was, Kylo Ren's Chamber. Mm-hmm. Uh, that whole sequence where things are appearing on the ground around them. And, and, and uh, if you can accept that stuff about the Force, then that was I, a good time. You know, I didn't have a problem with that. I, I, I enjoyed um, that as well. I uh, I did like Zori Bliss, and I did like the new character whose name I can't recall right now, the Stormtrooper. The Stormtrooper, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They did a good job with those. Uh, again, J.J. Abrams, I'm going to give him credit because I thought the acting was good mm-hmm. and, uh, from just about everyone, and you got to give a director credit for that. I never I never maligned uh, Ryan Johnson for getting bad performances from actors either. I thought he got good right. performances from his actors. Uh, <clears throat> Lando, Wedge... Um, the moment where the, uh, the the whole galaxy appears to help out the uh, <laughs> the resistance, and we get the Star Wars theme crescendoing one last time. You know, he's, yeah. it's it's a it's a home run. It's an easy home run, right? Of course. And, uh, yeah. uh, I did like uh, General Pride as well. Um, you know, I did too. <laughs> yeah, I really did too. Actually, help he me was out. Really help great. me out. What's the actor's name? Uh, oh, um. Oh gosh, why did I go? Right now, we, yeah. you know, we obviously don't have this written out, but we, uh, Richard E. Grant. 
Yes. Another he's great guy. Another yeah. great guy. Who I love action. seeing the Star Wars movie. It seems like destiny, you know, that this guy is in a Star Wars movie finally. Um, he can play anything, so it's almost a shame he had to play a bad guy, but he did a good job. Um, and um, I liked Ray in this movie better than I have before since The Force Awakens. Um, I like seeing all the all the characters from the sequel trilogy together. And uh, I really, really adored... Harrison Ford's cameo in oh, yeah. this. Mm-hmm. That was amazing. Um, mm-hmm. It's a shame Han Solo basically stole the thunder from every other original trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't quite deliver with everyone the way they did with him. Oh, I said something <laughs> negative. But uh, anyway, I adore that scene. Ben Solo becoming Ben Solo and throwing the saber away is powerful. I mean, uh, I don't know how they managed to get that in there. I don't have to say anything negative. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but somehow that rose above the things around it to me and was and connected and was effective. Adam Driver is freaking brilliant. Uh, say what you will about Kylo Ren as a character. He's absolute home run, uh, you know, with that part. And uh, I liked Ben Solo, even though he never uttered a word <laughs> except ouch <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> I liked Ben Solo. And as much as I hated Kylo Ren, I would have liked to have seen more of Ben Solo. That's how good I thought he was. The implication of him was. I would have liked to have seen what happened next. Yeah, um, yeah so all that. Uh, there's a lot of positives there. Um, and in I, the end, I enjoyed it. So I'll add to that, too. I'll just reinforce what you said, uh, Adam Driver. Adam Driver, awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> he, he, took was a, he took a part that and it was well so... It was underwritten, and he sold it. And uh, that was a real highlight for me in this film because I went into the film knowing pretty much that he was going to be redeemed and thinking that they're not. There's no way they're going to be able to sell this for me. And he sold it. He sold it. Him and Harrison Ford together. And I reinforce what you said about Han Solo's return. That was the second favorite scene for me in the movie. The the final scene and that scene were just mm-hmm. beautiful. They were beautifully yeah. acted. If you showed me those two, I would have been waiting at 5 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> to get yeah. You know what I mean? If you just showed me those two scenes, I'd be like, oh my god, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but that, those were wonderful. And that really sold the redemption art. I love the, too, the scene um, uh, Karelia mentioned the lightsaber duels. I loved that lightsaber duel among the waves where she actually killed Kylo Ren and then uh, resurrected him and the way that Adam Driver sold his reaction to that too of come, her bringing him back to life um, all of that was just so well done another highlight for me was Leia training Ray. Oh, I, I when in the moment whenever Ray called her master, I teared up in the theater. <laughs> like, I, we get to to see <laughs> Leia having Jedi powers. We get to see her passing it on to a protege. Um, it was that was just a beautiful moment for me that kind of reinforced the the nobility of what they did for the send off of Leia with the little that they had of Carrie Fisher. That was that was great to me. Um, like you said, all the original trilogy characters love having Wedge back for all of the one and a half second, uh, <laughs> love having Lando yeah. back, loved the, the guy playing Chewie is still mm-hmm. wonderful. Uh, he is such a, a great choice Yeah, I agree. in playing that role. Um, the, uh, the action scenes, um, overall I thought were really beautifully shot too. And then I loved it for all my complaints about the over the top cackling emperor at the end you know the over the top return of the jedi conclusion i still love having him mcdermott yeah back. I, I i will be completely remiss if i didn't add that to my likes i mean that really was one of the main things i liked about this film was having ian mcdermott back just seeing the emperor again and the way they shot it this time was so amazing i mean he looked pure evil you know more so than he's ever looked to me anyway in any other film or any other representation of the emperor he just looked absolutely freaking creepy <laughs> you know yeah. just uh, the way it was shot oh, man. I, I loved it i absolutely okay loved now now Karelian, you got to show us your t-shirt now this oh okay yeah i, I picked moment. this up a couple of days ago um you see the death star there and it says this is my happy place <laughs> <laughs> he has gone to his happy place <laughs> i have gone to my happy place fully operational happiness <laughs> <laughs> Fully operational. <laughs> so, so there, there's a lot to like about that film, you know. And that's a, that's a good summary. Um, do we have any final comments beyond that? Yes, please. Some, some, 
world class genius editor come along and save it. <laughs> 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 Honestly, it needs it needs another edit or yeah. two or three. Because it might could if only, yeah. <laughs> that was that was one of my big takeaways walking out. Was like, oh my god, just edit it again. They they just ran out of time. Yeah, they ran out of time. They they did a spectacular job for I, well, what they were up against. I imagine, but. It needs it needed more time. It's like uh, the cookie dough is not <laughs> fully, <laughs> fully <laughs> not fully what solidified might, yet. What, what we might see in the future of outtakes and things like that will be interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, deleted scenes and things yeah. like that. <laughs> so here we are wrapping up the Skywalker saga. Not wrapping up Star Wars because we still got the Mandalorian. Hopefully, we have the Obi Wan Kenobi yeah. show. Yeah. Um, although that's been temporarily, it sounds like, put on hold and it's yeah. shooting. Um, and hopefully we got the Cassie and Andor um, mm-hmm. show coming up on television. So it's not that's by any se- means the end of Star Wars. season seven of Clone Wars. Yes, Clone Wars <laughs> is this coming month. We are in this mm-hmm. month. It's yeah, this we're actually month. in February now, so later this month. <clears throat> so, guys, we will be back to talk about uh, Clone Wars then, and we also need to wrap up our discussion of The Mandalorian. So maybe um, very soon, future episodes, we can talk about the conclusion of the first season yeah. of Mandalorian. And when we have a, a couple of minutes, there's a couple of reaction videos I'd like to do. So um, just because I enjoy watching this stuff with you guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I did want to say, uh, rest in peace, Alan Harris. Who, yes, uh, yes passed away this week and we're not going to go into that because he deserves a lot more than just a mention but he was a phenomenal uh person uh who who just like jeremy bullock just like dave prouse just like a lot of other guys kept star wars fans engaged over the years when maybe lucasfilm wasn't interested in star wars very much and um always gave to people freely you know and and loved the fact that people were interested and was a real gentleman and um it never heard a bad word about him and he was certainly incredible to meet and and uh so he's a real loss so yeah, yeah. for, those, for, those, of you, for those of you watching who don't know that he's the actor who played bosk yes. and many other things yeah and yeah. other things as well but yeah. most notably uh you'd recognize him as bosk so yeah yeah beautiful persons we met at conventions he was so so sweet such a gentleman so, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, when we started this about Rise of Skywalker, this this long episode that we split into parts, did we give it a a rank like a rating like out of ten when we started, or do you want to? So. No. Why don't, why don't, I know we're going to change our opinions, but for now, yeah. what do you guys think? Yeah, out of us, one to ten. Out of one to ten. Yeah, where would you place it? Oh, it's hard, isn't it? That's <laughs> it difficult. Is. It's so difficult. <laughs> this movie uh, leaves you conflicted. I would, I would, I would give it a, I, I would just again on first impressions, I would say seven point five. All right, that's pretty high. That's good. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed it. So yeah, that's good. I'm so gonna say Rita? a six. I'm gonna say a six because it's, it's just above. Uh, it has some really great moments in it that elevate it above mediocre, but I have an analytical mind that that won't let me rest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it won't let me it won't let me give it an eight or nine or anything like maybe it deserves. I don't know. But uh, uh, and it's no insult to anyone who's involved in it at all, because uh, I bear no ill will against anyone. It's just uh, some of it, enough of it wasn't for me where I have to go with a six. Yeah, yeah. I, I would give it a six or six and a half, too. Just because okay. it's right, it's middling where it had a lot of problems for me, but it also, like Greedo said, had some outstanding moments. It so was it an enjoyable six. Solid. Yes, yeah. yeah. If it was a if it was a trilogy with just Ray and Kylo Ren and some side characters, it'd be like an eight or nine probably for me because yeah. I think they did those characters really well. But but the yeah. this is Star Wars still. <laughs> so it's a Star Wars movie for me, it's a six. <laughs> okay, right. well, I I think that's it. That wraps it up for our review of Rise of Skywalker. Um, please join us again soon for wrapping up Mandalorian and we're all looking forward to the final season of Clone Wars on Disney Plus so check us out we'll, hopefully we'll be able to get some reviews up for that series soon as well th- this month thanks you guys thanks to you guys for joining us um, look us up on Facebook Twitter uh, and take care we will see you again soon and yeah, leave yeah. us comments leave us your yes, rating please. of the film any one of these videos that you want Yeah. yeah. appreciate it 
Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks for paying attention and watching. At the Cantina Club. <laughs> 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 <laughs>